This is News 8 This Morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to your Tuesday. Time now is 6 a.m., but nice to just open those windows a little bit and let that cool air in here. Oh, you can feel it. It's yes. much cooler. Yeah, absolutely. Good morning to you. Yes, it is 6 a.m. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Stella Escobedo. We want to get to our top story right now. An attempted murder suspect is dead this morning after a chase and a shootout with Chula Vista police. This is the scene right now. A live look. It all started yesterday evening at Maxwell Road and Maine. You see police still there on the scene. Police say they were keeping a close eye on David Angulo when he carjacked a construction worker at gunpoint. During the chase, the suspect lost control of the truck and crashed into a military service member. Police say Angulo took off, then attempted a home invasion. That's when detectives say he shot at police. Three officers returned fire, killing him. These events are very fluid. They are rapidly evolving. And so the officers have to make split second decisions. And obviously when you're getting shot at, um, that uh, obviously can uh, make the officers obviously be in fear of their life and have want to defend themselves. Police say Angelo is a documented gang member and was a suspect in three attempted murders in just the past several weeks. Salons, gyms and churches can now operate outdoors in private parking lots under a new executive order that Mayor Kevin Faulkner signed. This comes as the governor also issued new guidelines on this. News Ace Netta Rompor is live along Harbor Island with where we stand right now. Good morning, Netta. Some people are happy and some are not. Yeah, it's not necessarily going to work for all businesses. This executive order, though, allowing uh, up to 4,000 businesses in the city of San Diego to operate on sidewalks, uh, parking lots, even open space uh, parking spots. So that's something the mayor just announced. His office also saying, again, that would impact some 4,000 local businesses. Now, among those businesses, as you said, the mayor issuing an executive order to allow local gyms, churches, and salons to expand expand outdoors. Again, using private parking lots would be an option. If they have one near them. Now, the mayor said gyms and places of worship operating outside effective immediately. Barbershops and salons, well, they had to wait for the go ahead from the state. State let regulations uh, initially did not allow that to happen. After a week of debate, mostly over environmental concerns, the governor announcing yesterday that those new guidelines also would allow salons to operate outside. They didn't get too specific on the guidelines on what services would be restricted like perms or highlights could that happen out on sidewalks but they were clear that regardless customers cannot go inside those establishments for any reason the governor initially announcing indoor operations would be shuttered at a wide variety of recently opened businesses because of a rise in COVID-19 cases as you know here in San Diego County we are still on the state's monitoring list. We worked through that over the last number of days and those new guidelines are up and hopefully that provides some, uh, more clarity. If we need to provide even more, uh, we'll get the good feedback. We want to support our small businesses and we want to follow all public health orders. Now, this move follows a similar executive order issued last month that would allow local restaurants and retail shops to expand outdoors. So you've likely already seen uh, plenty of restaurants setting up their tables and chairs out on sidewalks, those private parking lots and on street parking spaces. Many of them putting tents out as well. City Council voted unanimously to allow for that. And yes, yeah, so that's why the mayor went ahead and expanded this to include these other businesses. So you'll start to see gyms moving their equipment outside again. And salons also given that approval certainly going to be a unique way to operate their business but the mayor saying a lot of these businesses were just weeks from closing down altogether so at least this will hopefully provide them some sort of lifeline we're live here on harbor island back to you Netta, thank you. And while this has opened up some options for business owners, not everyone is on board. San Diego salon owners are speaking out about how this option poses some challenges for them. News 8's Lee Moore Abram shows us what a sidewalk salon might look like as owners try to work it all out. Well, this is what it might look like to get your hair done outdoors. And while some salon owners may be pulling out hairs at the thought of it, many are clearly ready to get back to work. Um, once the client sits down, we have... Chelsea Adair wasn't sure at first how she'd do it. Still allowing uh, activity to occur outdoors. But within hours of the governor's new guidance, she pulled out the table and the tools. I just feel like we're going to try it. Despite the hurdles... There's wind outside, you know. We're here to protect you, but we also are here to give a quality 
service or not at all. She says her temporary salon has what it takes, but across San Diego, salon owners are against the idea. They gave us an inch, but not enough. Headline salon owner Gail Fulbright says outdoor hairdos simply don't cut it. To give us this opportunity to work outside is and just do haircuts has many things that really don't work. Issues of chemicals and shampoos and perms, it was more complicated uh, than some had considered. While the governor didn't provide a list of specific services that can be performed outside, the State Board of Cosmetology is clear. No shampoo and no chemical services, such as perms and color. Here in California, color is big business. Quite honestly, I did a, a survey monkey, and my team really, they're not really up for just going out and, and doing partial what they do. Meanwhile, for nail salons, the additional cost of setting up outdoors may not outweigh the benefits. I put the dividers and I put barriers. I wear a face shield and I have a monthly service, um, disinfectant services. Prestige nail salon owner Jennifer Daffern still plans to give it a shot. You never know if it work or not until you try it. Going with the same philosophy as Solana Dare. And hold hands and get through this together. Now it's yeah. just a matter of there's my checklist. Following yet another COVID-19 checklist. Change is always uncomfortable. So. And of course space is limited so clients are urged to make an appointment. Boy, that's going to be a whole different experience for a lot of folks, isn't it? Well, I mean, if you can't get your hair colored or yeah. permed or whatever, so there's going to be fewer clients doing that stuff. But also for nail salons, I was just having this conversation with my mom yesterday. I'm like, well, how is it going to look? Probably not as fancy as what we're used to, you know, like the nice chairs <laughs> right. and stuff like that. But it'll get the job done and they can still be in business. Yeah, and that's the best case scenario for a lot of folks right now. Mm -hmm. And more than half a million people have now tested positive for coronavirus in our county. There is now 453 new positive cases out of nearly 8,000 tests. That's a positive rate of 5.7%, just below the 14-day rolling average of 6.1%. The total number of confirmed cases has now topped 24,000. The number of deaths remains at 478. In the meantime, $15 million from the last federal relief bill is now available to help low-income San Diegans who are struggling to pay rent. The city is providing up to $4,000 in assistance per eligible household. Payments are expected to begin in mid-August through September and potentially into October. Online applications are open until August 7th. For a link, click on the Help button at CBS8.com. At the Capitol, Democrats and Republicans are not agreeing on a new coronavirus relief package. The trillion-dollar Senate Republican plan proposes a payroll tax cut for businesses and eliminates $600 a month in unemployment benefits and would cut funding to schools that don't reopen fully. A $3 trillion plan from the House Democrats would extend unemployment benefits, include new stimulus checks, and send money to cities and states. Bipartisan talks are scheduled for today. Time now for the morning rush. $100 million in relief funds has now been included in San Diego County's $6.4 billion budget proposal. The $100 million will go toward testing medical supplies, food distribution, and other needs related to COVID-19. Overall, the spending plan is about 2.5% bigger than last year's fiscal budget. Virtual hearings to discuss the budget begin next month. And a convicted sex offender recently released from a state psychiatric hospital is no longer staying here in San Diego County. The Sheriff's Department confirmed that Carrie J. Smith has left the area after checking into a North County motel. We are told he is now in Garden Grove. Smith claims he killed three boys and molested 200 others. Despite being convicted of a misdemeanor sexual offense involving a child in 1985, Smith is no longer required to register as a sex offender. An online petition asking Governor Newsom to change that has thousands of signatures so far. And we now know the identity of the man who died after suffering a medical emergency while skydiving yesterday near Otai Lakes. Yeah, this actually happened um, over the weekend on Sunday. 47-year-old Joe Wingen took his photo shortly before boarding the Skydive Save San Diego plane. His brother says Joe loves skydiving and was excited to be making his first jump in 17 years, writing in his last message, fears lead to an average life. Witnesses say everything went normal when he jumped, still unknown what caused his death. Two more local school districts are set to reveal their plans for the upcoming school year. The Hamul Dulzura Union School District has a meeting today, and school is scheduled to restart for them on August 13th. Oceanside Unified will also meet to discuss reopening plans today.
Coming up in the hour here, we will be speaking with the new superintendent of Grossmont Union High School District. We're going to talk with her live. We'll go over their reopening plan and what new changes they will be enforcing. So don't miss that. It's coming up next at 630. The CIF is delaying the upcoming high school sports schedule instead of canceling the seasons altogether, which means fall sports like football could start as early as December. And because of that late start, this year we'll only have two seasons, fall and spring, with winter sports being absorbed into the spring. One local coach said that could be a problem for some multi-sport athletes. For some kids, they're going to be faced with other winter sports like basketball and soccer being pushed to that spring time frame. So they're going to have to choose. Do they want to play lacrosse? Do they want to play basketball? Do they want to play soccer or do they want to play baseball? It's going to be a tough choice for a lot of kids to make, right? Each CIF section will create their own master schedule for the sports year. San Diego hopes to have that done by August 14th. And we have a full schedule on CBS8.com. Just click on the Help button. If you're wondering how you can stay up to date on the latest information regarding schools, we have a handy resource for you. Just text the word SCHOOLS to 858-571-8888. We will send you a link where you can check out what your child's school district is doing for the fall. Next, new developments in the shooting that took place at a federal judge's home in New Jersey. The suspect found at the scene has now been identified. And do you remember this couple? Images of them circulated online after they waved their guns at protesters outside of their home last month. Well, it looks like they're now facing charges. And now two of Fox News Channel's most prominent hosts are being sued for sexual harassment. More on that story next.